Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Worm Whisperer channel. I'm the Worm Whisperer, and I just wanna welcome you back to this channel. Uh, I hope that you're enjoying my videos and that you're getting some great information out of them. If you've been here before, if you haven't been here, I do worm tutorials and I teach you how to be a better worm farmer. So I hope that you guys are gonna like this video today, so stay tuned. Okay, so for today, our worm video is going to be fix your worm farm fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over common issues in your worm bin, and I'm gonna go over quick fixes to get your worm bin back on track quickly and efficiently so you have minimal worm loss, and also your worms are gonna be happier and healthier quicker. So the very first issue that we're going to go over, and this is for basically if you're a brand new worm farmer and you're first getting your worms, the first thing we're going to go over is if your worms are going to try to escape. Because they are going to try to escape because they're stressed out, they've been moving around a lot, and they're not going to be happy. So what they're going to do is when you first get them and add them to your brand new worm bin and it has brand new bedding and everything in it, they're not going to be adjusted to that. So what they're going to try to do is very quickly, they're going to try to escape out of your bin. So how do you tell they're trying to get out of your bin? Well, basically you look at your bin and if they're all gathered around the outside of the bin and they look like they're trying to crawl out, that's pretty typical and a pretty normal thing. That can happen because they're stressed out. If you just started your brand new bin or if you've moved your bin, I found that numerous times that they'll try to escape from the bin. If you say move your bin from upstairs to downstairs, it's a pretty typical common thing that will happen with your worms. How do you fix that? So the first thing you wanna do is, if you've got a light laying around, the best thing to do is take the cover off the worm bin and then put the light over top of the bin. And what this is gonna do is, this is gonna drive the worms down into the bedding and back down into the bin because they don't like the light. They're very sensitive to the light, so what's gonna happen is that's gonna drive them back into the bin. It's gonna keep them from trying to get out of the bin. You might have to do that for a couple of days just to keep them in there. Just keep an eye on the moisture and make sure they don't get too dry, and it won't hurt them, because what they'll do is they'll stay off the top of the bin and they'll go down deeper into the bin, and that's where you want them to start. So our second thing that can happen in your worm bin is what happens if you've overfed your worms. This is also another very typical and a very common occurrence inside your worm bin. So how do you identify this in your worm bin? Well, the first thing you're going to notice is smell. Your worms and your worm bin are going to start to get stinky and there's going to be rotten food in the bin. So that's one way that you can tell very quickly and very easily that your worm bin is being overfed. A lot like our first one where the worms are trying to escape, your worms will definitely try to escape out of this situation. They're not gonna like it, it's gonna be stinky, your bin's gonna be out of whack, and they're gonna be trying to get out of the bin. So what you wanna do is, is you wanna identify if they are trying to get out of the bin, and if you're putting that two and two together, like that your bin is stinky and that your worms are trying to get out, they're most likely being overfed. You can also tell if there's extra food in the bin. So if you're looking at your bin and you see a lot of food in there that's not getting eaten, that's another really good indication that your worms aren't getting through the food fast enough and that you're getting extra food and your worms are being overfed. So what are some quick fixes to fix this up if this is going on in your bin? Well, the first thing you wanna do is, is you want to move the old and access food out of the bin. You wanna get that out quickly and you wanna remove it from the bin and make sure that's not an issue anymore. And that's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do if you've overfed your worms. The next thing you can do is, is you want to add some extra carbon. So what that's gonna do is, is that's going to aerate your bin more and it's also going to add more carbon into your bin and it's gonna help dry up some of that extra moisture from all that food. It's also gonna help cut down the smell of the bin because even just removing the food, the bin's still probably gonna be a little bit stinky. So the best thing to do is take some carbon like leaves or cardboard and you're gonna to wanna to move that into the bin and mix it in there really good. And then lastly, if you have overfed your bin, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't feed it for at least three to four days. They can live on that new carbon that you just added, like the cardboard, they can eat that. So you're gonna to want to not make sure that you don't 
add any food for the next couple of days. You want to give the time for the worms to adjust back and get back in their rhythm and maybe clean up any of that excess food that you didn't get out of there. So the next issue that you can identify very quickly is look at and what if your bin is too dry? So how can you identify if your bin is too dry? Well, you can look at the top of it and if it looks dried out, then that's a good indicator, but it may be damp down underneath that. So you wanna kind of dig down in a little bit and just check and make sure that it's dry down underneath as well. It's just on top, because it may just have dried out on top, which is a pretty typical common thing that happens in your worm bin. Another great way is if you have a flashlight on your, on your cell phone, you can take it and kind of just shine it on your worms for a second. And if the worms are lifeless and not moving very much, that's a pretty good indication that your worm bin is getting a little dried out. The worms breathe through their skin. So if they're not moving around really actively and such, that could be an indication that the bin is too dry and they're not able to breathe as efficiently as the worm would like to. So one of the first fixes you can get for this is to get a spray bottle. So just get a spray bottle, fill it with water, and then just spray the top of the worm bedding in the worm bin and just spray a little bit at a time. You don't wanna to put too much on it because if you do, it's gonna get overly wet and it's gonna get wet too fast. And then you're gonna run into the next problem that we're gonna go over. So just keep a light spray on it and see how it does. And you just wanna get it a little tiny bit damper and try to get the worms moving a little more. Another excellent thing you can do if your bin's a little too dry is you can freeze your vegetables and your vegetable scraps that you're adding into your bin and then add those in with the water. So what you're doing essentially is adding in the water that's coming out of the vegetables when you thaw them out. So they'll have quite a bit of water content in them. So the best thing to do is let them thaw out some and then add those to the bin and that'll add a little bit of extra moisture to your bin without having to spray or do anything extra to your bin. One of the big keys is, is that you want to have a little bit of a drier bin than a little bit of a wetter bin. It's definitely better to have a bit more dry in your bin than a little bit too wet. It's definitely better to have a little drier bin. You don't want the worms too saturated in water. That's a big thing in a bin, so you want to keep that in mind when you're spraying. So how can you tell if your worm bin is too wet? Well, one of the big ways is, is you can just look at the bottom of the bin and if you see a lot of water dripping out of the tap at the bottom of the bin, that stuff is called leachate. And it's kind of like a water type substance that's coming from your bin. And if there's a lot of that coming out of your bin, that's not a good thing. You wanna have very, very little of that dripping out the bottom of your bin. If there is a lot of it coming out of your bin then that's a sure sign that probably your bin is a little oversaturated and you're gonna wanna keep it drier. So what can you do to fix this really quickly and efficiently? Well, if your worm bin's too wet, one of the big things you can do is just add some more carbon. So you can add some more leaves or you can add some more cardboard. That's what I like to do is just add some more cardboard to the, to the bin. And then if you take the cardboard, you're just gonna kind of mix it in there in the bin. You don't wanna wet the cardboard before you put it in there. You just wanna kind of have the cardboard put in there dry because that's what you're gonna use essentially like a towel and it's going to soak up all that extra moisture in your bin and it's going to create a much healthier, more airy bin. So that's one of the quick and easy ways to fix uh, an overly wet bin is to kind of soak up that water. However, if your bin is way too wet, you may just want to kind of put like a lump or two of the, of the cardboard in it and then you're going to want to let the water soak up into that cardboard and that's a way to remove the water too. So you can take that cardboard back out and then save it for another time and then just re-add it back to the bin. And basically that's what you want. You want your bin to dry out very quickly. And the good thing about taking that cardboard out is you can use that cardboard. You don't have to throw it out. You can keep that cardboard and put it aside and you can reuse that in your bin. So next time you want to add some more carbon, just make sure that you keep that cardboard in an airy space. You don't want it to get stagnant or anything like that. So you wanna kinda of make sure that's got good airflow and that you're not, it's not getting moldy or anything bad happening in there. And you wanna make sure that you're keeping it good and ready for the next use when you use it in your worm bin. So another great way to keep your worm bin uh, from getting overly wet is to take your food scraps. If you're finding that your bin is getting a little too wet because of the food scraps, cause they contain a lot of water, up to 70 to 80% water are in your food scraps. So if you're finding that you're getting too wet in the bin just because of those food scraps, 
one of the great things that you're able to do is freeze your food or freeze your food scraps. And then when they thaw out, you're gonna get a lot of that water come out of them right away. So a really good thing that you can do is very quickly and easily is just freeze the vegetables, freeze your food scraps, and add them into the worm bin after you've removed the water that's drained out of them from the freezing. And it's a great way to keep your worm bin just a little bit drier if you're finding that it's getting a little too wet. So next on the list is what happens if your worm bin is attracting fruit flies? So that's a common issue for a lot of people, especially if you have your worm bin inside. So how can you tell if your worm bin has fruit flies? Well, they're going to be flying around outside the bin. If you open your lid, you may have a lot of them fly out from underneath the lid of the bin where the bedding is. It's just a matter of identifying visually and seeing if you've got a lot of them in your bin. If you have a lot of them in your bin, then that's going to be an issue for you. Then I've got some great ways that you can fix that. So one of the main fixes for that is to avoid adding food for a couple of days. So if you know that you're adding fruit and there may be fruit fly eggs on them, just don't add that to your bin. Maybe get rid of that outside in your outdoor compost pile. That's one of the best things you could do if you're getting a lot of fruit flies in your bin is just stop adding the type of food they like, especially fruits because they just, they really go nuts for that fruit. Another way to keep your fruit flies down in your bin is when you're feeding your, your worms, depending on what you're feeding them and when you're feeding them, you wanna take that food and you wanna bury it down inside your bin and you wanna cover it over with carbon. So you wanna put cardboard or leaves over top of it and you wanna make sure you're covering that up good so the fruit flies can't get at it to lay their eggs and eat it. And if you're really having a problem with fruit flies and you can't get rid of them with the first two ways, uh, one way I suggest is to take a small cup and then put a little tiny bit of apple cider vinegar in the bottom of it and then cover your cup over with saran wrap. So if you do that and then poke some holes in it, the fruit flies are going to want to fly into that. So what you can do is you can set that on top of your worm bin and then that'll attract the fruit flies inside of that cup and then you can dispose of them outside after they're dead. And that will help you get rid of a lot of the fruit flies that are out flying around outside your worm bin. Okay, so one of the next things that can happen to your worm bin are animal pests. So a lot of times you're putting a lot of stuff in your bin that animals are going to be attracted to. They're going to be attracted to the smell and they're going to want to get in there. So one of the biggest issues you can have outside especially, but maybe even inside, is getting a lot of animal pests into your bin. So how can you tell if you've got animals in your bin? Well, if you go out in the morning and you look at your bin and it's being dug out and it looks like something was in there digging and clawing around and eating, that's a big sign that you probably got animals in your bin. I've even heard of people who've gone outside and seen turkeys in there eating their worms. So you never know what could get in your bin outside. And even inside, your cat or your dog could get into your bin. You just never know. So I'm going to give you some ideas about how to keep animals out of your bin. So one of the first fixes to keep the animals out of your bin is never ever add fish or meat into your bin. That's going to for sure attract the animals, the neighbor's dog, any kind of raccoons, anything around the neighborhood is going to smell that right away and they're going to come looking for your bin. Another way you can keep the animals out of your bin is put chicken wire over top of your bin and underneath your bin. That way you're going to keep those animals from digging underneath into your bin and getting on the top of your bin and digging into your bin. That'll stop them from getting into it and that'll keep them from digging into it. Another really easy fix for that is if your bin's in a busy spot where the animals know it is, they're going to keep coming back. It's hard to keep them out if they're going to keep coming back over and over and over again. So one of the quick things that you can do is if you're able to and your bin's not too big or, or if your bin's not in a set position where you can't move it is to move your bin to another spot. So you can take it away from where the animals are getting into it and just move it to a whole another spot in your yard or another place in your house where the animals can't get at it. And lastly, uh, if you're getting a lot of animals in your yard, uh, just bury the scraps down a little deeper. So make sure you cover them up really good. So if you're putting in your fruit scraps, just make sure you dig down into your bin and make sure that you cover them up really good so you're keeping the smell down and not attracting the animals around your bin. And lastly, just uh, beware of turkeys in your yard. So turkeys, sometimes they'll get in your yard and they want to eat all your worms. And if that happens, you're going to have to chase that turkey out of your yard. Okay, so our next section is going to be what if your worm bin pH is too high or too low? 
So some of the ways that you can tell if your pH is too high or too low is obviously you can test it and see. And if you see that it's too acidic or too base, then you can know that way very quickly and very easily. Uh, other ways that you can tell if you don't have a tester is your bin may smell vinegar-like. It may smell rotten or it may not smell very nice, like just kind of smells off. A lot of times if you have a pH issue in your bin, your worms won't be very active. They'll be kind of lackadaisical and just not moving around as much. And that's a good way to tell something's off in your bin. And that's a good indication. Maybe I should check to see if the pH is off. A lot of times if you have a too acidic bin, it'll actually burn your worms and their worm skin. This is something that you want to keep a really close eye on. You want to watch for this in your bin at all times. Also, if the worms have too much acidity in the bin, they'll also get something which is called string of pearls. So I'll put a picture of that on here just to show you what that looks like if they get something like that in the bin. And another issue that you can have is, is that if your bin is too acidic, you can also have a mite problem. This is not a given, but you could have this if your worm bin is a little bit too acidic. So what can you do to fix this? Well, one of the first things to do is to make sure that you're not adding too many citrus to your bin. This is going to cause acidity in your bin. So you don't want to be putting a lot of acidic fruit in your bin like oranges or lemons or those type of peelings and such because that's also going to throw off your worm bin acidity. One of the things a lot of people don't know is that uh, Adding a lot of nitrogen to your bin is going to increase the acidity of your bin. So you're not going to want to add too much uh, anything that's going to have a lot of nitrogen in it, anything green or anything like that. You're not going to want to add too much of that to your bin at one time. So if your pH is out of whack, one of the things you can do is, is to add more carbon. That's another really great fix. You can add more carbon and remove some of that excess food that's in there. Add more carbon and mix it in there. And that's going to help get your bin back to a better pH right off the bat and it's going to hopefully save a lot of worms. So adding that carbon to your bin is going to get your pH back quickly to between 6.6 .6 and 7 and that's kind of where you want it to be. So if you add like any kind of carbon like cardboard or anything, mix it in really good and that should help your pH adjust very quickly. So another thing you can do is if your pH is out of whack and you want to get it back in line quickly and buffer it, so buffering what it is it basically is keeps your worm bin at an optimal pH range. So things you can add to keep your bin at that kind of range is you can go in and you can add uh, oyster shells, crushed oyster shells, you can add uh, ground up egg shells, anything like that like dynamitic limestone that's going to be really a quick and efficient way to get your pH uh, back to a buffer zone and it's also going to help everything in your bin get adjusted really quickly and easily. Okay, so the next one is a really big one and it's about having your bin overrun with mites. So this is one of the bigger ones that people run into when they're first worm farming and even experienced worm farmers run into this. I mean, I still have mites in my worm bin. So, I mean, if you've got a lot of mites in your bin, it's just a visual thing. You're just gonna look down and if you see a lot of mites running over your food and crawling over your worm bed and your worms and you know you've got a lot of mites in there and it, if there's too many in there, then you may wanna get rid of some of them. Uh, most of the time, mites in your bin aren't that big an issue as long as there's not that many of them. If there's too many of them and you want to cut them down, I'm going to give you some fixes on how to do that. So one of the first things you can do to cut down on your mite population is to dry out the bin some. Mites like a, a damper, wetter bin. So if your bin is overly saturated with water and it's overly wet, there's probably going to be a likelihood that there's going to be more mites in there. So one of the first things you can do is to get rid and cut down your mite population is just to keep the bin a little drier than you normally would, but not too dry because you don't want to dry out the worms. So you can do just enough to start cutting down the mite population. So like I had mentioned in the last pH issue, uh, one of the things you can do is to buff your pH. If you've got an acidic pH, the mites are going to like that more. So one of the things you can do is the same thing that you did in the last section with the pH is you can start adding some uh, products to buffer the pH more, something like uh, limestone or something like uh, crushed oyster shells or crushed egg shells will help buffer that pH and that will also help cut down on the mites in your bin. So if those first two things 
uh, aren't working or aren't working as well as you'd like. Another thing you can do to cut down on those mites is to add food that they like. So they tend to like sweet food like banana peels, apples, pear cores, anything like that. What you can do is you can take a bunch of those and just kind of set them on the top around the top of the bin. And what will happen is, is the mites will overwhelm that food and they'll cover it up. And then to get rid of them quickly, you can just take that food out and you're removing very large amounts of mites while you do that. So that's a great way to get rid of a lot of the mites quickly and cut down the population really fast. And lastly, and one of the things if you can't get rid of them or cut them down with the other things that I've mentioned here is you can go in and stop feeding the worms for a couple of weeks and just give them cardboard. The mites aren't attracted to the cardboard, it'll keep the pH neutral. If you just give them cardboard for a couple weeks, that's also going to cut down on the mites as well. So I would just stop feeding them for a week or two and just see if that helps cut down on the mites in your bin. If you're keeping it a little drier and you're giving it a little more cardboard and no food, the mites are mostly feeding on the food that's in your bin. So if there's none in there, the mites aren't going to be able to reproduce as fast and that's going to help with your mite population. So moving on, what happens if your worm bin is too hot or too cold? So I'm going to give you some ways to tell and I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can fix that. So how can you tell if your worm bin is too hot? Well, one of the simplest ways is you can use something called a meat thermometer. And I like to do this all the time if I think my bin's getting a little too cold or too hot. And you can take that meat thermometer and you can just kind of stick it down in the bin a little bit and just read the temperature and see how the temperature is in the bin. So if you don't have a meat thermometer, another quick way you can do it is just by hand touch. So if you put your, your hand on top of the bin or maybe just put your fingers down a tiny little bit into the bin and just see, is it too hot? I mean, if it's hot for you and you feel like it's too warm on your hand or too cold, then it's probably too hot or too cold for the worms. The worms have kind of the same kind of temperature range. So if you stick your hand in there and you find that it's a little too hot or too cold, that's another great way to tell if your worms are too hot or too cold in their bin. And another way you can tell is if your bin is in a spot where the sun is shining all the day, then it's going to heat up. Or if it's in like a cold basement or in an unheated garage and you know it's going to be getting cold, that's another way to tell that your bin is probably going to be too hot or too cold. So what do you do? What are some fixes if your bin is too cold? Well, one of the things you can do is you can uh, take a towel and you can put it in hot water and then just rinse it out really good or wring it out really good. And then just kind of take that hot towel that's wrung out, make sure you're not going to get water in the bin from the towel and just kind of hang that over top of the bin and that'll help keep the warmth in and the warmth from the towel will also get into the bin and that'll help warm up your worms. Another thing you can do is if your bin is in a cold garage or something like that is obviously you can, if you can, you can move the bin to a warmer spot. So if you can move it in next to like a heater or a register, anything like that and just enough to warm up the worms that would be a, a big help for the worms. So what are some of the things you can do if your worm bin is too hot? Well, it depends on where it's at. So if it's out in the hot sun all day outside, uh, maybe you wanna find another spot for that bin. Maybe you wanna move it to a cooler, more shadier spot during the daytime so it's not getting that direct sun. And that should help cool it down enough that the worm should be more comfortable. Another thing you can do if you need to uh, cool that worm bin down really fast is that you can take ice cubes and you can take a few ice cubes and just kind of set them on the middle of the bin on the top, over top of the bedding, and kind of let that cool ice cube water just kind of drip down through the bin. That'll help cool the worms really quickly. Uh, you just want to make sure you don't do that too much because you're going to get the bin really, really wet. And that's not, a, that's not a good thing in itself. That's kind of another issue that we've already gone over. So you kind of don't want to do that too much. But if you're in a situation where the bin you feel is really hot and it's the worms are suffering or the worms are dying, then, and you want to fix that really quick, yeah, the ice cubes will definitely do that job. So basically you want to make sure that you're always keeping your bin between 50 Fahrenheit and 80 Fahrenheit. That's usually the best. So one of the things you want to keep in mind is, is that worms will freeze below 40 Fahrenheit and they'll start to cook over 90. So you want to make sure that your bin is not in either one of those temperature ranges because your worms are going to die if that's the case. Okay, so that's going to wrap up our video for today. So I want to mention one thing before we go and that's just don't get discouraged if you're getting started out. A lot of these things will happen. They've happened to me personally and I've had to work through them, but every time I've always come out on top and the worms have come back. So you're gonna run into issues like that. My biggest thing is just don't give up. 
Uh, worm farming is a lot of fun and it's very rewarding for yourself and your plants, your garden and the environment. So just don't give up. Worms are really hardy. Uh, they're not going to die unless you do something very drastic like if you leave them in the bag or if you completely forget about them for a year. Even still, they may even live, like, depending on what's in there for food and stuff. A lot of these things uh, are going to be there and are going to be issues for you in your bin. It's just something you need to work through, and I hope that this video will help you with that. Say, hey, look, there's how I can fix this really quick and easily and efficiently. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or comments, uh, I hope that you'll leave them down below. I'm happy to hear all your comments and all your uh questions about your worm farm if you got anything uh, hopefully myself or somebody in the community can give you a hand with those questions and i just want to thank you all for joining me if you like the video please subscribe and give me a like i really appreciate that and i hope that you guys all have a great day thank you so much